Uh, oh, please, uh, wel voor een uh, Pablo Caboni. You will talk about uh, Unbound and FreeBSD and how they uh, lovely work together. So. This is a story about how I felt in love with Unbound and while using FreeBSD. It's a story I faced, I suffered, but with a fi uh, happy, uh, it finished with a happy smile um, six years ago almost. And based on true events, yeah, there were true, so true events. Well, some figures. I'm, oh, I'm 42 years old. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina, where I worked last 20, uh, 20 years ago as Unix admin, DNS admin, net admin, etc. I love DNS, love BSD, especially FreeBSD. Well, I used to work with network devices, network protocols, uh, at low, very low level. RFC, I used to read RFC text and sometimes to discuss friendly about it because of bad implementations. Uh, well, sometimes I enjoy to develop with some languages like C language, but in an amateur way. My contacts, my personal contacts, Twitter, Mastodon, LinkedIn. Um, the info, information I will show you later, I remote some sensitive uh, things, just in case. The story. Six years ago, I was gathering some KPIs from DNS servers, appliances, and uh, we realized uh, at the office that the CPU usage reached about 60% uh, uh, and no more. Um, Q uh, queries per second reached until a, a, a top at, at a line, but nothing else. It got stuck, and users experienced almost three se seconds for waiting for, for resolving the ho their host names. We what were those users? Uh, mobile subscribers. Well, um, there was um, uh, a hardware upgrade planned, but in the meantime, and well, to more than 2.5, the real numbers, 2.8. The truth. 2.8 customers, two hardware appliances, a plateau line from 12 p.m. at lunch until 8 p.m. And well, 60% of usage and noth nothing more. Um, 20,000 queries per second per box. This is fine. <laughs> Everybody's exploding, but this is fine. The hardware upgrade was planned in the middle of this story, in the meantime. Part number two, make it worse. There were some firewalls in the middle of the network. Um, those firewalls were almost exploding because of high, uh, high traffic of UDP packets. Um, it was a mess, <laughs> face pan. Um, just for fun, in the meantime, I was playing, I was testing in a in a lab, in a mini lab, with a Dell PowerEdge 19 and 50, 
uh, Anbound and their FreeBSD operating system. Oh, some people say, uh, hey, Pablo, you must test. It rocks. OK, I will give you a try. Well, next steps. The traffic, because it was traversing several firewalls, it needs to be uh, being for, um, optimized. And we had to, rem we have the job at that time, they had to remove, uh, re uh, do reengineering for those, those firewalls and remove entirely from the network for where the, the DNS traffic was traversing. Um, <clears throat> that hardware, uh, the, the hardware that was planned, the, it was, it, it was uh, two load balancers plus uh, four, um, four, four servers with uh, a commercial brand uh, the, uh, of software inside. Um, it should be easy, but not as you may expect, because some issues happen later. Problems began. At uh, that time, 2013, in Argentina, we had a, a very a, a huge economical crisis. We had economical issues. So uh, we had issues to import hardware. So we, why, we, we bought the, the hardware, load balancers and servers, but only load balancers arrived to the company. So physical, those four physical servers didn't arrive. We, we had the half of the infrastructure. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> Nothing to do with the UH protocol. In the meantime, this was the lab infrastructure, uh, Dell PowerEdge, FreeBSD 8.4, running under AMD 64 uh, architecture. Um, well, unbound, one point four point twenty one uh, compiled with uh, live event live event is a library that abstracts you uh, the insights of sockets so you put live event with previous you can install on Linux we can install on another operating systems um, it uses for example in previous kq which you will expect high performance for FreeBSD instead of uh, select functions of sockets, BSD sockets. Uh, well, the version 1.4.14b, very stable, good, very good comments. No, I didn't use DNSSEC because it, with, those, with that hardware, it, you will expect high CPU usage. Uh, no, no, no CPU usage. High uh, latency for resolving queries. Um, I used DNS top. It's a must, DNS top. Excellent tool. I will show you later. Among other tools, DNS perf contains rest perf and DNA. DNS perf package contains rest perf and DNS perf tools. I've used in particular rest perf. It's copyright from Nominum, now Agamai. Uh, it it gives you the same feeling that uh, a real stress testing on a network you will see. And at least at that time, there was, it, it is still up and running, that URL. You can download 
up, up, up to 10 million of, of entries for of random queries that people did in the past, samples. I don't, I don't want to ask where, where did they, came from, they come from, those samples, but... Um, some readings, you must read calomel.org. It's a must. If you get into that site, that website, you can look for how to several several utilities, several protocols, several several software. For example, um, mail, so mail servers. Um, how to uh, DNS servers, whatever, including DNS, uh, among DNS, and it includes FreeBSD and OpenBSD. How to tune, how to do fine tuning on the network stack. Part number one of the master plan. The service, the service, the DNS service was exploding. And well, we have load balancers, but no servers. So my boss said, hey Pablo, you were playing and testing Unbound. When I give a try in testing slash production, yes or yes? Yes. And that's how they they motivated. <laughs> they say, well, let's recycle some hardware boxes because we have no brand new hardware. And try to get the most of that. Optimize every by tweaking every little bit. And hands on. Some premises, uh, no, some premise, sorry my spelling. Uh, some of them, uh, for example, a cluster of load balancers. There, there were two sites, one cluster and other, another cluster. That load balancer, you must use only 50,000 ports, not more. Well, you can use until 60,000 or 62, 63, it's, it's, it's better to use a lower quantity. So if you exceed that kind of, if you exceed 50,000, if you exceed uh, 65 uh, ports, you must use, of course, another VIP, virtual IP address. And several servers were behind those load balancers, and FreeBSD was the, the, the premise for for the, for serving the, the ser, uh, for serving DNS queries and behind the load balancers as um, as a way of protection plus load balancing and give you the best of the service. And uh, and another premise. Uh, that every IP address I will use, it should be up and running quickly here or here or here. No, no any cast. It was in, uh, impossible to use any cast, so they decided to use BGP. BGP with slash 32 in mind for every IP address. The big picture. This was before. The firewall, the fire, that, uh, that figure of fire, it's, it's a joke because it was exploding. It was getting on fire. <laughs> and one appliance per site until November 2013. At the same time, mo uh, mobiles there, 
trying querying and querying and querying and exploding the network, exploding the firewalls, exploding the server, exploding whatever. And the traffic went to the servers. Those, those appliances were resolvers. Um, the traffic to the authoritative servers were uh, to the left. Um, a summary of what what's happened at that time. Uh, I'm sorry for the small fonts. The newest picture. The same mobile subscribers, customers, but this time querying load balancers. And the load balancers should redirect, redirect the, the traffic, the UDP and TCP traffic to those appliances, sorry, to those two servers and one server. I let you know why. That, that situation happened between November and November 2013 and May 2014. And the new, C, the new status was with servers, uh, uh, with the CPU usage for those servers at less than 40%. Um, no more firewalls in the middle. The traffic get, get, got lower, very lower, became very lower. Um, well, that's the slash 32 I said before regarding to the VIPs. Um, those load balancers, um, those, some functionality, some features of those load balancers were BGP uh, software daemon. So they, they publish their VIPs themselves. Part one for, for doing fine tuning at operating system level. UDP sockets, port range, backlog, NIC drivers, timings, uh, interrupts modes, and logs. Uh, you should think about how many queries per second you will receive, because if you log the whole info locally on physical drives, it, the I.O. will drop down considerably. And several instances, in fact, it was one, uh, one uh, process, one amount process, with, by, um, led using uh, between six and eight cores. But, uh, I mean, one thread, one core. Well, uh, queries available, queries serving per core, and etc. Some tr the trickiest part: you must to touch loader.conf, you must to touch how interrupt service requests. Per uh, maximum threads, three to to serve uh, to listen to the packets and answer quickly. Uh, well, NBB clusters and buffs, um, interrupt handling directly, max queue limit, the work stream queues it should reach until here ten uh, ten thousand uh, ten. 10,240, 10, the same for sending queue length. There are more knobs, but it's a very huge list. Another more knobs. Uh, this time with sysctl.conf, sys I mean OIDs. 
max socket buff, the maximum socket buffer size, it's imp very important. You must raise to 16 mega, 16 million. Uh, network buffer send and network buffer receive the same. Fast forwarding between interface, you, they must not wait. Well, send space, you should raise the TCP buffers just in case. At that time, there were no so many TCP, so many queries over TCP. Um, well, receive until 524,000, the backlog queue, incoming TCP connections. It, and the list, again, it's incomplete. Well, time to, for Unbound. Unbound has a very same default, but if you want more performance, if you require, you must, uh, you must change uh, those parameters like uh, number of threads. It's important. You must, you must put, my recommendation is to put less core than the current you have. If you have eight cores, it's, I prefer to put six or maybe seven, but nothing more. Why? Because if you have terrible traffic, and you must get into the console by using SSH, you will blame it. And the rest, uh, SLAVs, memory lock contention, some parameters, I, I, was tr I was playing with those parameters because I'm, I'm aware, but not so aware what they do. And the documentation for Unbound says, Try to not touch those parameters, those memory parameters, as labs. Um, well, resolve re, uh, record set size, memory size. Um, that implies you, if you, when you query, you, you execute tons of queries, those queries go to memory. If the memory is small, those queries, the cache will, will discard those queries, and you will expect more traffic. So it's better to raise those values. Message memory cache size, num number of ports, because queries per second, is a, a, queries per second it implies a open ports at the same time. How many queries do you want to receive per core? Because if you receive excessive queries, your cores will get, will get, you will get hit on their cores. And socket receive and send buffer. Again, you must raise those levels. Those are some recommendable, recommendable um, recommend, my recommendations. For me, uh, for a million. Part number five of of six. There are some tools. For example, DNS top. DNS top is like a top tool of every Unix operating system, but it shows you which IP address sorted by who's the guy who is, is hitting your DNS service. It shows you your IP address, the IP address. Uh, it shows you queries per second. It shows you as a total. It can, it, its capabilities, for example, it, it, will sh it can show you um, the whole text for the query. I mean host names or well query types. If you have query types like like uh, name server, um, mail exchange, or whatever, it will appear and it will say, "Hey, this IP address, it's hitting your server. Check." 
Well, it will not say check. You, you will say at the top. Um, but it's, you must check. Um, it doesn't touch nothing of uh, whatever it's running on the server, so you can, you can uh, execute without any hassle. Um, lightweight. And one, one thing to keep in mind, when you execute for first time, it will show you just by default where, what, uh, how many queries you, you are receiving at that box. But you must put how many queries you are sending, answering. So there are some options that you must put first. I mean, force to show you queries receiving, received and queries answered. Well, Resperf, it shows you maximum queries you can use on that server and until it can uh, it, until it, ca it, it reaches the limit. Um, I prefer over DNS perf because DNS perf it shows you every time the same stress testing over the host names, and I prefer this perf because it sends you a burst of queries. Um, Resperf, well, that's the explanation. My, sorry, my notebook has no, no <laughs> such amount of hardware for VirtualBox or whatever, so it's a little demo I recorded on another computer. DNS top, at the top. At the bottom, below, resperf in action. So you, uh, as you can see, queries and replies. You can see below. I, you can see below when, when it has no more replies to send, and it shows. Let me show you. It shows here the maximum throughput. This is the maximum the DNS server can reach. Queries and replies. Let's show again. Here, here is the, the, the 10 million random host names nominum provided at that time. It's a, it tries to send resperf 60, 65,000 more than 65,000 queries per second, and it waits for a reply. And here are some, and some query types. This is a counter. It, this is a counter the qu of queries per second, and this is an accumulated. And how many times does it, it run the, the stress testing? Conclusions from the infrastructure. First test, I got around 10 until 15,000 of queries per second. It was cool, but I'd say, why not to do fine tuning by following calomel.org instructions? Okay, let's go. And, well, a reminder, I didn't use DNSSEC at that time. After I, was, I, after I played with fine tuning, the box, the box show me, show, showed me um, 54,000 of queries per second. So it was great. <laughs> Uh, 
the new DNS service. Uh, how, to, how, how do we assign the new IP before addresses for the mobile subscribers? It's extremely easy. You touch, you touch the, 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 the configuration. And after the session of the mobile subscriber drop down, if it tries to reconnect, it will receive the new IP before addresses. And it was not a forced disconnection, a massive disconnection. It was, for example, when you use your cell phone, um, you power off or you disconnect because no, no signal or whatever. That's the time when it receives the new setup. Or be, because those sessions ha, ha, contains a timeout of 24 hours or almost. Um, well, I used Cacti at that time, all times, for gathering information and doing fancy graphics. DNS top I used to see how it, how was it, their behavior. Conclusions. Well. Rapid deployment on the lab. Uh, there were um, several factors. Uh, bottleneck. Some previous D provide some uh, nice or excellent performance without any hassles. And no stability, no performance issues. In fact, they they were up and running those servers without without hang without nothing for about six months. Well, the raw numbers those six months queries started with eighty thousand queries per second at November and when end up and uh, with uh, two with 120,000 and at May of 2014. And response time uh, dropped down from three seconds for, for every query to 0 0.1. So the service was good, was running fine. The end. Well, queries were made from mobile subscribers. And the quick and not so dirty solution was received so well, they say, hey, Pablo, this is a nice solution. Don't. Lessons learned and don't. Don't put a firewall in the middle when you have very high traffic of DNS of queries. Don't trust on your appliance. <laughs> don't that, uh, specifications are okay, but don't follow. Don't don't trust blindly. And don't avoid high availability DNS infrastructure. Uh, it's better to have a load balancer. Second part of this. You must have KPIs for query per second, UDP traffic, of course, TCP traffic too. You can use DNS top. Um, you must put load balancers and dedicated, not fi firewalls with general purpose for the traffic. Don't do. Use uh, physical uh, servers. Don't use virtual servers. I I wouldn't put some something on a virtual infrastructure for high if you want high performance and you have high traffic. If you expect high, high traffic, use uh, a, a scalable operating system and DNS. 
like FreeBSD and Unbound. Uh, Unbound has several nice features. I love security in mind. It has so many anti bad guys features that it's a nice software. Acknowledgements, FreeBSD, and Labs, Nominum, Measurement Factory. Thank you to Marius Serborski. He pushed me. Hey, Pablo, send your presentation. Send your talk. Send, 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 send. Send like the bird of Homer Simpson. Tick, 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 tick. I'm here, I am. And thank you to Alan Jude. He, sent, he, he helped me to polish my English and some words and some, some and I, for example, don't do that kind of animations. You, put, you must put raw text like, like the previous. Uh, well, that's all. Questions? Any questions? No questions? Oh. Hello, Pablo. Thank you very much. Have you meanwhile, con or have you considered enabling DNSSEC validation? Yes, but performance was a huge bottleneck for those old eight, year, eight years old servers. So it was not the priority at that time. Today, yes, of course, but no, not with hardware from 20 and 7 or 20 and 8. So I have a couple of, of topics. Uh, first, I agree with you, you should use a physical server. Um, however, some of my colleagues at ICANN who operate the LROOT server did a number of tests using different virtualization platforms for the authority server they run, and uh, they found that it was fine. Um, and again, I agree with you, but I just want to say some people have tested this and found that there's no real change in the latency or the isochrony of the service to virtualize. So uh, uh, you, you may want to soften your recommendation there a little. Second, I have a question. What is the use case for a 16 megabyte receive socket buffer? What is this case? Um, the socket buffer is that when you receive uh, so many queries per second, it receives, it must put the, the content of the socket in some in somewhere of the memory. It has some uh, payload, those sockets, and whatever, but multiplied per 60,000. So it, it must, con it contains, uh, it, it must contain, it must store the content into that memory. That's the final purpose. I know the purpose, but the use case in this situation would seem to be that you are willing to wait more than a second between when a packet is received by the, inter by the net network interface and when it is seen by Unbound. And I want to suggest that the experience of the Buffer Bloat uh, project, which is online at bufferbloat.net, shows that if you cannot service the response quick enough, if you can't actually get it in or out in a lot less time than that, you will do more harm than good by actually processing it later. So I want to suggest a change to your recommendation where you calculate the number of uh, octets of uh, query payload and also the number of uh, queries that you would receive, worst case, in 250 milliseconds and set your socket buffers to that so that you will not be in a position of burning CPU resources to receive queries that you should not be answering. Yes, uh, the, 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 my, the, my main problem at that time was just stop, stop, stop hitting the, resource, the network resources, stop hitting of course, the nearest servers stop hitting whatever. So some parameters like that, they were over, uh, over uh, sized. 
Yes. So, so that's it's... the final. Uh, it should the final explanation. Right. That was everything was just in case because. I understand. I just noted that you are an expert and that this presentation will be watched and your parameters may be copied. I want to suggest that everything we've learned about uh, buffer sizes is to measure them in time, not in uh, packets or bytes, and to constrain the amount of time we are willing to buffer. Uh, because uh, yesterday's newspaper is worth less than today's, and a one-second old query is probably better left unanswered. Uh, not only is uh, it more not always better, sometimes more is worse. Uh, finally, I want to say that when FreeBSD chose to move from bind to unbound in the base system uh, or as the recommended platform, uh, I realized that my work at ISC was done because I got bind from BSD, and when the BSD I used stopped using bind, I started looking for a new job. Okay, thank you for your talk. And uh, I have the same feeling about the um, uh, socket buffer configuration because uh, you increased the TCP socket buffer to the 16 megabytes. I, I increased, but again, just in case. Yeah, yeah, so I think that increasing the buffer size limits the maximum number of concurrent uh, connection of the TCP. So in the TCP case only. Oh, um, so, so I'm curious about the uh, what what. The, how many uh, concurrent connection you want to accept in server? I got, I got your point. Um, under normal con circumstances, you have unbound. I, I remember it contains almost, or at that time, ten open connection TCP connections. Yeah. So, they, so I modified that. Mm -hmm. We had to modify that at the same time. Or for TCP parameters of the operating system. Yeah. That's the explanation for oversizing yeah. such amount. Yeah, so another question is that what makes the upper limitation of the performance even after your optimization? For example, the CPU usage or memory uh, CPU, saturation? CPU usage uh, lowered until 40% uh, per core. Yeah. So what Almost. determines the uh, current uh, so query per second? So if you want more uh, uh, performance, so which part it limits the current? M your... More uh, concurrent. Yeah. Ah, OK. Uh, the thing is, you need another more another additional IP addresses first. Mm -hmm. Load balancer uh, level. No, no, no. I mean, the single server. If you want the more performance you, you, on this single, to, single you need to, to raise. You need to add uh, an additional IP address for the server. Mm -hmm. You need to raise some almost socket buffers. Mm -hmm. But wait, those resources have some limits. I was playing with those limits. Mm -hmm. Maximum socket buffers. The best value was until 8 million. Uh -huh. If I put t uh, 16 or 20 for 20 million, mm -hmm. it, my server uh, hanged so well. So 8 million was a, a quiet value for no receiving any kind of problems. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I... I my my first step, including reading the whole documentation, it will be stress testing until reaching some point. Mm -hmm. DNS stop and resperf. Okay. Okay. If okay. you stop, if you stop receiving uh, answering, you will get the the right parameters for uh, for you you will put you will get the limits. And you will say, I, I need more servers. It was more, more than studying, the, the, studying the, the parameters. It was, a play, it was playing with those parameters and doing our capacity planning. It's a mix. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone? 
Uh, well, uh, thank you very much.